When man took those first steps on the moon, where were you? Maybe you were sitting in front of a television, witnessing an epic world first. If you aren't old enough, then hopefully we can create the same feeling that we felt all the way back on July 16th, 1969. This is Space Journey 101, and today we will look at the Apollo 11 space mission. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've just passed the 56-minute mark in our countdown. We're still proceeding in an excellent manner at this time. All elements reporting in that all systems continuing to look good at this point. At Cape Kennedy, Apollo 11 was getting ready to launch into space. On board were Commander Neil Armstrong, Command Module Pilot Michael Collins, and Lunar Module Pilot Edwin Buzz Aldrin, all waiting in trepidation to leave Earth's atmosphere continuing very excellently at this time. The enormous 363-foot-high, 6,698,700-pound Saturn V took off with millions of people watching the launch from every corner of the globe. Two hours, 44 minutes, and one and a half revolutions after launch, the SIVB stage reignited for a second burn of five minutes, 48 seconds, placing Apollo 11 into a translunar orbit. Apollo loses speed throughout nine-tenths of its journey until the moon's gravity overcomes the pull of Earth. No up or down, no day or night. Only the slow creeping of the harsh sunlight through the windows as the spacecraft rotates to keep from getting too hot on one side, too cold on the other. On July 18th, the astronauts would don their spacesuits and transmit the second TV transmission. A few days later, on July 21st, 1969, the biggest step would happen. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong left the confines of the Eagle and set up a TV camera for the transmission of the event to Earth. Tell me if you got a picture, Houston. You got a beautiful picture, Neil. Okay, we got that one. Armstrong and Aldrin were now walking on the moon, and President Nixon spoke using a telephone to the astronauts. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made from the White House. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you have done. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great honor and privilege for us to be here. There was a one and a half inch silicon disc with goodwill messages from 73 countries and the names of congressional and NASA leaders. Armstrong and Aldrin set up a device to receive laser beams from Earth to determine the exact distance between the Moon and the Earth. The two astronauts collected 50 pounds of rock and soil samples and took many photographs. Armstrong and Aldrin planted the United States of America flag to which Aldrin saluted and Armstrong captured the pivotal moment on film. The whole stay on the moon lasted 21 hours and 38 minutes. The astronauts boarded the Eagle and docked with Columbia. The Eagle had left the moon and returned to Columbia. Within this strange ship, two astronauts and a treasure. On July 24, 1969, the splashdown of Apollo 11 happened in the Pacific Ocean. The astronauts were placed in quarantine on the recovery ship and flown to the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, where they would spend 21 days in the Lunar Receiving Laboratory. 
During the quarantine, the astronauts were checked for any diseases they may have gotten on the moon, and tests began on the lunar samples. The Apollo 11 mission brought the people of the United States closer together and made them feel like they had one-upped the USSR. Let us know in the comments if you were alive during the Apollo 11 mission. In the next episode, we will talk about first wheels on the moon. Stay tuned.